welcome to 3 Minute Thoughts on Access and Inclusion. This week we look at accessible and assistive technologies. What's the difference? Why is it important? When we talk about accessible and assistive technologies, it's easy to get confused with the terminology. So what is the difference? Why is this important? The term assistive technology is used very widely, and for organisations such as the World Health Organisation, includes items like wheelchairs, prosthetics, orthotics, aids and appliances. Perhaps for clarity, it's easier to think of these as assistive products, products designed specifically for the use of people with a disability or those that are ageing. Assistive technology can be equally confusing. When we looked at translations in the past, we found that assistive technology can translate as machines that help us, which can range from your microwave to your air conditioning. In everyday use, increasingly when we talk about technology, we're thinking of computer-related technologies. Those that process data, aid information, and have the potential to control other devices and appliances. That's something we're going to bear in mind when we think about the difference between accessible and assistive technologies. In this case, accessible technologies are those technologies which are used by everyone and anyone, but have been designed in such a way as to be usable by people with a disability out of the box. A good example would be an ATM. Its height, its screen, the use of audio, controls such as braille, all make the device fully accessible to someone with a range of needs. Our personal technology can also be designed to be accessible and inclusive. Let's take our phone as an example. Many modern smartphones would include options such as a screen reader, voice output, magnification, voice control, and of course can be controlled at a touch or a gesture. In some cases our devices need to be customised or adapted to work best for our needs. In these cases people with a disability use assistive technology. Technologies that add and customise your phone to make it fully usable by you. In these cases Assistive technologies are those that have been specifically designed for the use of people with a disability to facilitate access. They might include switches for people with physical disabilities, on-screen keyboards, word prediction, communication software. But increasingly these distinctions are becoming artificial. Mainstream technologies are proving to be vital for people with a disability if accessibility is planned for and they're designed to meet their needs. Products such as Alexa or Google Home weren't designed specifically for people with a disability. But now we find people with vision loss or physical disability finding voice control over the environment to be enabling and empowering in a way that hadn't been anticipated. Some technologies that were once seen as assistive are now very much part of the mainstream. Voice control, touch and gesture were all seen as a special access for those with a disability in the past. But as we all increasingly use technology, so we more frequently use these, often because the context demands it. For instance, not being able to use our hands to answer a call when driving has been referred to as situationally disabled. Companies such as Microsoft and others have recognised that many productivity tools that make reading easier, help us organise our work or play in our day, can be valuable to those with disabilities and additional needs. And to confuse matters further, some of those accessible technologies can now be adapted to replace traditional products such as handheld magnifiers, CCTVs, communication aids and environmental controls. I'll return to this in my next three minute thought. So, in conclusion, does it matter? To some extent it does. 
Accessible products with add-ons may need to be identified and funded in quite different ways to traditional products. They sit less, less neatly into categories and are constantly updated. But they reach to a mass market and can be used to meet a wide range of needs. In practice, we need to understand both and recognise how one influences the other. This influence often provides the basis of innovation as we seek new ways of addressing old challenges. But that's for another time. Until then, thanks for listening.